How's it going? Jay Stevens here. Welcome to my channel. If you're new to my channel, I like to make hunting videos, I like to make fishing videos, and I like to make a lot of ice fishing videos, and that's the plan for this winter. Not only fishing trips, but a lot of educational content. I picked up a toy this summer, Garmin Live Scope. If you guys have been, you know, in the fishing world the last couple of years, you've been hearing obviously lots about it. This is not just an open water unit, it is an ice fishing unit as well. I'm gonna show you guys how to convert it into the ultimate ice fishing rig. Guys, so I just picked up LiveScope this summer. This is the Equimap Ultra 106. Uh, there's multiple units that have LiveScope. What, what gives you the LiveScope capability is the transducer in the black box, which I'm gonna show you guys, which is hidden below here. When I first got this unit, I, I knew right away that I'd be using it for ice fishing, but I wasn't sure how I was gonna rig it up on the ice yet. There's a couple different options. I know Garmin makes an ice kit, but after posting my first video, a guy named Jason Young, he has a group called LiveScope Addicts that he runs on Facebook and it's everything LiveScope. Great resource if you wanna learn more about these powerful machines. He also said you should check out Summit Outdoors. They make uh, a great ice fishing kit. I wasn't sure how I was gonna rig up my Garmin yet. So this is um, their ice fishing shuttle, but it's not only an ice fishing shuttle. You can use it for kayak fishing and use it just to have a portable setup. So that's the beauty of this. Now I can bring this on my kayak. I can bring this on a smaller boat. So this is it pre-assembled. If you wanna see a video on how to put it together, Jason did one. It, it's not the most simple, but if you follow it step by step, it definitely helps a lot. That's what we're gonna be working on today. So first off, we gotta take the black box and take the graph and take the transducer off of my boat. And then we are gonna work on putting it on this pre-assembled rig. So this is the GLS 10 box I got buried. You can't see it right now. Um, this is really the, the power behind the computing of the live scope. And I tried to tuck it away you know, to save as much room as possible. I'm always trying to, you know, hide the cables and compartments I'm not gonna use and same thing with this box. So I'm just gonna pull this sucker out. So this is the brains behind the live scope right here. It's big, it's heavy, it's kind of rock solid. So the last thing we have left is to take off our transducer. And I've had many, many questions on how I've mounted it. So I'll hop to the back of the boat now and show you guys. All right, so we're on to the last part. This is the transducer. This is what does the, the craziness. I don't even understand how they design something like this. But as you can see, it shoots down, it shoots a little bit forwards, and it shoots a lot forwards. Those are kind of like the angles. We gotta take this off. I have this mounted on the back corner of my transom. I know I've gotten so many questions about this. If you have a tiller boat and you can only mount it in one spot, this is where I would mount it. I got this idea from Aaron. All props go to Aaron Weeb, Uncut Angling. Nice thing about this is it stays in the water. You can read on plane and you don't always have to worry. Sometimes if people, they just put it on the trolling motor and then you always have to put the trolling motor in to use live scope. But this, it's in all the time. Unfortunately, it's a little tougher to follow individual fish, but if you only have one, this is a pretty good place to put it. Okay, so we got all the parts taken off and now we're going to start building the kit. And I'm probably gonna have to follow some instructions at this point. All right guys, as we put this together, please realize this is my first time putting it together. I'm following the instructions as best as I can, but this already came pre-assembled as mentioned. Uh, you know, most of this putting it together in the wiring you can find online on Jason's video. Now we're doing the final touches and a couple uh, tweaks. We're, we're souping it up a little bit. First thing is the GLS unit. This is what allows LiveScope to work. And this is going on the back. We've got four screws. First, I'm just gonna get everything started and then I'm going to tighten it up. And please guys, do not try to do this the night before a trip. I've done that way too many times, you know, trying to do electronics, upgrade cameras, swap things out before trips and it, it just never pays off. Do this long beforehand. When you are mounting this box, make sure the connection's mounting down towards you. That's where all the cables are gonna hang. Otherwise, if you do it at the top, you're gonna have to redo everything right away. So, all right, now we're gonna flip it up top. All right, and we're done. That's it, live scope, ready to go. Just kidding. I knew I was gonna get a lot of questions about how I was rigging up my live scope this winter. So I thought, you know what? Why not make a video about it? It'll uh, it'll save me answering a couple of questions and maybe it will help you out. So Jason from Live Scope Addicts was telling me that take the handle off, put the cables up this loop behind the handle and then back. So this is how they're gonna go into the back of the graph. Next, we're gonna mount the bracket. On the front right there, there's a bunch of different holes for different sizes. It's gonna accommodate, I'm, I'm fairly certain, up to a 10 inch screen. Got four bolts I'm gonna put through here. You gotta remember you're not drilling this into um, you know, a steel plate. You're drilling this into plastic frame. So just don't go too crazy with the tightening on it. All right guys, next step is we're gonna hook up the battery. And if you're using a setup like this, you pretty much need to be using a lithium battery. If you're already spending this much money on the whole setup, on your live scope, on the shell and everything, spend the money. Dakota Lithium makes an awesome lightweight battery. I mean, lithium batteries are pretty much half the weight and twice the power of a lead acid battery. This is a 23 amp hour. What Jason from LiveScope Addicts was telling me, for every hour of usage, you need approximately 1.75 amp hour. So something like this, I think he said you're gonna get about 13 hours out of. Dakota Lithium is coming out with an 18. That's gonna fit in this perfect as well. I was gonna use the 18 for the video. It didn't come in time, but that's probably what I'm gonna use for a lot of the season for most ice fishing days. You're not gonna have more than nine hours of sunlight anyways. So the 18 amp hour is perfect. But I'll show you guys how it slides in here. 
All right, so we slid the battery in. This is snug, as you see. It's probably tough to see from that angle. There's a bracket that holds this battery in. You could add a strap if you wanted for a little added security, but posts pointed up, so it's a little further from the ice. Go from there. And the reason I showed you guys and, and that Jason said to, uh, to put the cables underneath the handle here is then you have a little more flexibility for this handle and then you can also tilt your screen a little further up. I can't imagine doing this without a lithium battery because already now, even without putting the screen on, it's a heavy unit. As you can see, there's a lot of tight cables in here. Um, before I start hooking up these uh, auxiliary cables, if I hook them up right there, it's gonna be a lot tougher to get to the battery. So I'm gonna make sure to hook this up to the battery first. So now I'm gonna slide the battery out a little bit and we're gonna hook up our other components. This is my first add-on. This is my first accessory to the unit. And this I found on Amazon. They're like, I think I got a two pack for 20 bucks. And it's basically a little inverter. Obviously this end got cut very short because I pulled it off of, uh, I think I had it wired into my kayak, but basically it's got two USB cables on the end. One for my phone, because you all know how much time I love to spend on my phone. And secondly, one for the GoPro. So sweet. So what I'll do is I'll wire it into the main wiring so it's on the switch. And then I'm gonna probably use some JB Weld and I'm gonna stick it onto the side somewhere there and it's just going to be two usb ports all the time ready to go whatever whatever you might need to charge i was kind of joking about my phone but all right so we have everything hooked up to the battery right now i know it looks really clean but if you spin it around it's kind of a, a mess right now all right so these cables we're going to start wrapping up some of these power cables just to tidy things up and you can loop them the only thing you got to be aware of and i, I learned this in, in jason's setup videos you don't want to pass your transducer through it because that actually creates creates some sort of magnetic field so just Keep that in mind. No matter what you do, this is still a lot of cables. That's just the reality of bringing live scope on ice. I think it's absolutely incredible, but uh, there are times where it's, you know, maybe not the most portable. Yeah, little bundles of joy. We got cleaned up there. We're gonna snip them off. Now we're gonna put them in this compartment and never think about them again. Okay, we're now hooking up the power cord and the network cord. We're getting there, guys. All right, look how clean that is on the back. That looks fantastic on the side here. You can see where I bundled all the cords much better. All right, guys, we got some JB Weld that we are gonna use to fasten these USB connectors. Remember those from before? They are so nicely just sticking out of the side of the case. I think we're gonna put them side by side right there. It's not the prettiest, but it's gonna work. And this is a sweet little mod. I can't tell you how much use I've gotten out of those little ports. Instantly, you're not bringing around extra you know, battery packs. Yes, this 23 amp hour is a little bit overkill for the live scope, but now I can run two GoPros all day. I don't have to worry about it. So literally this case can be my mobile filming station. Final steps, once this dries, we gotta get the transducer rigged up. I'll show you the portable bracket and the case for it. We're ready to go ice fishing. So I'm just gonna pull the pin to make this easier. Check this out, boom, it just comes off that easy. So you can just easily transport that transducer, whatever you're doing. Got the transducer against the summit pole mount, putting in the rubber washer, followed by the metal washer and the bolt. So obviously you could run this in perspective mode too, but I think probably the most useful option is, you know, having it in down or a forward motion. So pretty easily I can adjust this right here, but we're gonna just lock it down for now. Before we get any further, I, I think this is one of the best accessories they made. And, and guys, I just found out about Summit recently. They're not paying me to do this. They sent me some gear and I was like, you know what? I need a way to rig my live scope anyways, you know? Shout out to them. I will link them below. You can find all of this gear. And it's cool having, you know, anglers designing this stuff. They know, you know, what we want. This kit is just, no. there's no wasted space. Cables right there. The live scope module in the back. Perfect size for the battery. It's awesome. Something I noticed with this transducer, this transducer is, you know, $1,500, $2,000 Canadian to replace. Will they make a cover for it? I would say be very careful if you are transporting this. That should just snap over the top. And now, it's safe, you know, if you have to have it, you know, in the back of your snowmobile or in the back of whatever cargo container, instantly that's not gonna get smashed around and that would be, uh, you know, I've, I've heard of people damaging them and it, it wrecks the image. So you wanna keep that super clean. All right, so I got the live scope, the actual transducer cord now. I'm gonna pass it through the side and it is tight, but I, I, I like it because then you don't have as much, you know, wasted space. That's the big boy on there. Okay, and now we need to wrap it around this handle. And as we're wrapping it, you wanna make sure that you're not twisting the cable. So as you can see, I'm spinning it as I go. That's all the cable I'm gonna wrap up for now and I'm gonna put in the bag. I think I said like Summit Outdoors before, summitfishingequipment.com. Once again, things will be linked below, but I'm pretty impressed with, uh, with this whole setup. All right, so we got the transducer cable wrapped up. And now you can see, if I open this up here, there's actually a hole in the back. And this is also where you can grab the handle, but 
pass your transducer through. So this is nice, super clean. Like this whole setup is way cleaner than I thought. And then it can say, stay in this back compartment here, which keeps it safe. Before I show you the full setup, we're gonna do a couple things above and beyond, like I mentioned before. I'm gonna put my screen on just so I can kind of see how everything looks. All right, screen is on. So that's how the baby's gonna look right there. Oof. First modification is we're gonna make this filming friendly. I think this is a two inch or inch and a half ball. I will confirm in the, in the description below, but I think I'm gonna mount it right on the edge. This is the modified live scope rig from Summit Fishing. 23 amp hour Dakota lithium inside. We've got added RAM mounts here and here. You know, you got one to film the screen, one to film myself fishing. Can plug right into those two USB ports I added on the side. So then I'm charging that one battery and everything's good at the end of the day. You don't have to worry about, you know, 16 different batteries. And then you've got the couple different mounts here. So you can put it on your ice fishing, whole hopper mount, whatever you want to call this, their ice fishing mount. And then other option, or you can use this a little bit as a tighter package. You can slide in here. You've got your bendable arm, then you can turn it. Everything's really nice and close together. You can put the handle on top. But the cool thing about Live Scope is that you can fish multiple people with it. You could fish three lines. Pretty cool technology. Cool that people are making such amazing attachments for this. I can't wait to try this out on the ice. No, I'm not sponsored by Garmin. Uh, I still have flashers. I still think there's a place for flashers. I don't think it makes sense to bring this thing everywhere. I'll just show you some of the other stuff. We've got two switches on the back. So one's master power, and then one also does our glow ring. Great little option to supercharge your jigs and let's make sure it turns on and it turns on. So that's good. Can't wait to bring this thing out on the ice. Yeah, counting down the days till ice fishing season.